In the fall, I will be attending uh, New York University for um, to major in musical theater, and I'm just so excited and I'm so grateful for everything that I've been able to do and that they've been able to put me where I am today. So without Roanoke City Public Schools in the Arts Department, I would have no idea what I'm doing. Nonprofits like Southwest Virginia Ballet justifiably take center stage when we think of arts and culture in our community. But too often operating in the wings without much fanfare is an organization that daily inspires thousands of children in all the arts, singing, playing an instrument, painting, acting, and dance. On today's episode of Buzz, part four of our six episode partnership with the City of Roanoke and Roanoke Cultural Endowment, we are going to shine a much deserved spotlight on this organization and hopefully inspire more families to take advantage of its free offerings, the arts programs at Roanoke City Public Schools. I am the proud superintendent of Roanoke City Public Schools and my name is Verlita White. Hi, I'm Whitney Johnson and I'm the fine arts supervisor for Roanoke City Public Schools. When I was in the fifth grade and I was able to do uh, some modern dance, my fifth grade teacher, uh, Miss James, she set up a modern dance class after school and there was a way for many of us to stay connected to school. It was fun, it was engaging, and I was able to have a safe space and a safe place and do something that I loved and enjoyed. I was involved in a children's theater back in Colonial Heights, Virginia. And the teacher, I remember her name, her name was Jane Bryant. Uh, she was just this passionate theater educator. And I just found my place, I found my niche. And if it wasn't for my school that, that you know, gave us access to this program, I wouldn't have been able to find it. So I'm, I'm just really grateful that I had the experience of, of participating in the arts from a very young child, even as I went through uh, the, the upper grades as well all the way into my, my college experience, it's what kept me grounded, what kept me connected, and I really want that experience for our students now. My goal is really to make sure that we have equitable programming for all of our students in all of our schools, um, starting in elementary school, that if they want to play an instrument, that they have that access, um, and that that can grow into middle and high, that we have really great enthusiastic teachers to continue to foster and grow that love of the arts for our students. We are so lucky in Roanoke City Public Schools to have the support. Um, I think a lot of divisions, every division is going to say we support the arts. Roanoke City supports the arts and puts their money and their mouth and all of their attention to the arts. Um, we are so lucky to have a board and a superintendent that values fine arts and celebrates it. We have a superintendent that got, gets on stage and dances with our students. Um, and that's, that's, you know, that we, you need that. It's, it's, you, you need that. You've got to have that support in, in order to have these, these strong, great programs that we do. That when students feel connected to school because they're doing something that they love and enjoy and that they appreciate, then they're more likely to come to school. They're more likely to graduate on time. They're more likely to not get in trouble because they want to continue that. But certainly there's a social, emotional, and psychological side to this as well, that when students are participating in something that they enjoy, when they have the benefit of the music expression or the arts expression, or even when they're creating something, it makes us feel better all the way around. We have had students in um, Christmas parades. We have had students dancing in the Nutcracker. We have had students performing on their high school stages. We've had 31, 31, that's not, 31 choir concerts uh, within the last two to three weeks. Um, art shows, um, planning for spring musicals, all of those things are happening. So we need word of mouth and a really strong marketing component to, to make sure that we're selling our story and getting people to come and see our uh, students in, in, in their element, um, so. Whenever you see any production that is put on by our students, our parents come out in full force. So we do need to continue to get the word out. I do want our parents and our community to continue to celebrate and support the arts because the bottom line is that we also need the funding uh, for the arts. And so we have committed 
uh, to the arts in our strategic plan and in everything that we do. And we just want that continued support by the community, by our elected officials, and by those who are setting policy so that they can see the benefit of the arts just the way that we see how the arts benefit our students. To help Roanoke City Public Schools educate the community about its arts programs, I reached out to my good friend, Tony Pierman, owner of Access, a full-service advertising agency in Roanoke. In an earlier episode of Buzz, Access provided a wealth of pro bono marketing resources for Feeding Southwest Virginia. For Roanoke City Public Schools, Tony, of course, said yes and his team got to work developing promotional materials that will be ready for reveal in summer 2023. Meanwhile, I dusted off my lunchbox and began visiting classrooms throughout Roanoke City to discover more about their many arts programs, such as its Summer Fine Arts Academy, where middle schoolers from all over Roanoke come together to produce a full musical in two weeks. Superintendent White's goal with the camp is for kids to stay safe by staying connected. But while producing Aladdin Jr., kids learn other lessons too. My name is Cassidy Corker. I'm an eighth grader and I'm going to James Madison Middle School. Something that Aladdin has taught me is how to communicate, not exactly through words, but through actions. And something Aladdin has definitely taught me is timing and teamwork. What I've learned is emotions. Like, yeah. What I learned is to have like facial expressions and to show yourself and who you are. Could we see a facial expression? <laughs> My name is Sophia and I'm going to West Cena Elementary and what I learned is to meet new friends and how important this play is. My name is Walker Johnson. I'm going to be in fifth grade next year and I go to Crystal Spring Elementary School. And something I've learned in Aladdin is how to be in a group and meet new friends. One thing I learned at Aladdin Junior is how to be someone I'm not and have really fun with it. My name is Kanisha Jones. I'm going to eighth grade at James Madison Middle School and I learned to get more in tune with my character. Something I learned in Aladdin Jr. is to never make your back face the audience. That is one main thing. That's it. Hi, I am Jahara Miner. I attend James Madison Middle School and I'm going to eighth grade. Hi, my name is Callan Johnson. I will be going in the seventh grade at James Madison Middle School. My name is Taylor Helm. I'm in the sixth grade at James Madison Middle School. My first performance was at James Madison Middle School. It was a Matilda Junior musical, and I played um, Kelly, which was like a backup dancer, but technically a third grader. So it was, it was kind of brand new, you know, because I enjoy doing dancing. I'm not really like spotlight, you know, until now, until I'm jazzing. Funny enough, it was actually at James Madison Middle School. I was four years old, and I did Aladdin. I was playing the little monkey Abu. And it's like nice that I'm actually the main role in the show now, my first show, and I'm in the main role. It's, it's a dream come true. I was the lead dancer at Hairspray, and it just, ever since that, I love to act and dance. Um, before that, I started doing dance and ballet at three years old, and then I just um, adventured in more genres of dance, and then I started acting, and I loved it. And what have you gained from being in drama? Confidence, lots and lots of confidence. And it helps a lot. Yeah, I think it's definitely helped me. I was I was probably a little, been a little shy, I think when I was four years old. So I think theater's helped me become the person who I am today. And it just like takes away all my problems. Do you have a lot of problems? Um, not really, but like sometimes, um, like school, um, just, Handling a lot of things gets me stressed, and acting just clears all of that. Cause I'm not good at like communicating with other children, and um, I don't know. I'm not really good at making friends and stuff. Cause I'm like scared to ask them like, "Do you want to be my friend?" You know. And but now I'm like, you know, I'm an actor, so might as well. Dance. When I first started dance, it definitely helped me without being shy. Um, 
it helped me gain tons of confidence because I used to be a very quiet person and sometimes I still am because I'm not still comfortable with being a loud person but I still can be a loud person because I get to express my feelings through dance and acting. It just helps me, you know, forget about everything. Like what? Like, you know, like um, family issues, grades, report card, um, <laughs> SOLs, you know, it was one of those random things. Uh, I would like to be an actor and a singer. My dream is to come on Broadway. <laughs> but yeah, I would say that I really just want to be on Broadway. I want to try my best. I want to go to a musical theater college and you know, I'll see where, I'll see where it takes off. My name is Jack Plogger and I'm a recent graduate of Patrick Henry High School. My first musical theater experience was in The Lion King Jr. at James Madison Middle School when I was in sixth grade. Um, I did the show, I just had a great time. I was always into sports and everything like that, but it took over my life in the next six years. It's just all I ever wanted to do. I was um, ensemble in Lion King, then the next year I was the Beast in Beauty and the Beast. I was the principal in Greece. I was Shrek in Shrek the Musical. Uh, then I came to high school and I was ensemble in a show called Aida. I was a show that people don't know about. It's called Honk Jr. I was ugly, was the character's name. which, um, And then I was Captain Phoebus in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And I was Robert Martin in The Drowsy Chaperone. And finally this year I was Jack Kelly in Newsies, which is just a dream role of mine. So it was great. And so in the fall, I will be attending uh, New York University for um, to major in musical theater. And I'm just so excited and I'm so grateful for everything that I've been able to do and that they've been able to put me where I am today. So without Roanoke City Public Schools in the Arts Department, I would have no idea what I'm doing. The opportunity to perform publicly on stage begins at an early age in Roanoke City Public Schools. Through a partnership with Southwest Virginia Ballet, Artistic Director Pedro Zelai provides free weekly dance and Spanish lessons for fourth graders throughout the city. The program, Dance Espanol, culminates each year in a major springtime production. From performing on stage to painting on canvas, Roanoke's visual arts classes also shine, but not only in beautifying school hallways, but in our community as well. My name is Jennifer Shammy. I am an art teacher at Roanoke Academy for Math and Science um, with Roanoke City Public Schools. My name is Giovanni Perla and I'm a fifth grader in Roanoke Academy for Math and Science Elementary School at Roanoke City Public Schools. Hi, my name is Jossier Stone. I am a fifth grade. I go to Roanoke Academy for Math and Science. We worked closely with the Clean Valley Water Council and Mill Mountain Zoo examining the effects of plastic pollution on our natural waterways and our students had the most amazing experience ever. It opened their eyes, increased their awareness and their empathy for animals and the need to keep our ecosystems healthy. We created a project called, an art class called Turtle Stacking Eyes on a Better Future. It's cause to show us how plastic is bad, bad for the rivers and bad for the oceans and bad for the lakes and bad and especially bad for the animals. I'm an elementary teacher. So working with plastic was a little bit challenging to transform that plastic into a sculpture. Um, so that was step one, and the students shared their ideas, and then we got to, well, what is the sculpture going to be? What is the, the theme of the sculpture? We looked closely at turtle stacking behavior, and we found that that might be a really good mix to create a turtle sculpture because, and have it reflect turtle stacking, because turtle stacking is a collaborative effort where turtles climb on one another, to get so warm by the sun and they don't see. fight, they get to the top. And recycling is a similar effort. It is a collaborative effort. 
Yeah, I was totally inspired by Miss Shammy to help clean up my school playground. It was filled with lots of plastic bottles, snack wrappers, and all that stuff. And when I saw that, I jumped into action, and it was clean. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Love it. I don't know about everybody else, but it told me not to fight with each other because when they stacked to keep each other warm, they didn't fight. So it just told me not to fight with anybody. Art can also be mixed with science, math, and all that stuff. Yeah, and... And we did this experiment with glue, and we put the glue on some, some marker lines, and we proved that there is more color in black and brown than you thought. Hmm. The main color in brown is red, and the main color in black is blue. Can you believe that? <laughs> So when I give my students the materials, I want them to do a lot of the problem solving. And they, they have a chance to get in the moment, engage with the materials, manipulate the materials, and figure out solutions. And there isn't one solution. Like, how are we going to make this plastic water bottle stick to the foam? There isn't one solution. Some students, like wrapped pipe cleaner around, some students added glue, and you're giving all students a voice to figure things out for themselves and not give them the answers. I just want to keep drawing and I hope and I can hopefully get a camera as big like that so I can inspire others to draw. The marching band probably gets the most buzz of all the school arts programs. And both of Roanoke City's high schools, William Fleming and Patrick Henry, certainly get their share of the limelight, from halftime shows at Friday night football games to public events like the Virginia Veterans Day Parade. As a former choir director myself, I've always appreciated schools that are committed to thriving choral classes. But string ensembles? Hi, I'm Virginia Willis, and I am a graduate of Roanoke City Public Schools, I, where I first learned to play violin, and now I am the orchestra director at James Madison Middle School and Fishburne Park Elementary. So my dad is a really big guitar player, and he kind of instilled this idea of playing a stringed instrument as a way to connect to yourself emotionally and to kind of cope with the things that happen in your life or in everybody's lives. So it was really important to me to learn how to do those things and I found an absolute home in my orchestra program at my middle school in sixth grade and I just loved it from there. I moved on up through high school and I decided to go to VCU to teach music and share that love to my students in the future. I was in a situation just like a lot of people in Roanoke City schools or any public school system where financially it wasn't the best, right? And I found, um, I found free music education, which is absolutely yeah, I essential. I found uh, teachers who I adored and who were supportive of me. And, and in, most importantly, I had David Lips, who was just the most supportive person I've ever met. He had his son-in-law make my violin um, and gave it to me for free, an instrument who, that is usually very expensive. So just having that support system is one of the things that I found so important about public school education, where you can do anything on your own outside of these systems, but if you do it within the system, that means that people like my students here get to start their day with some music and they don't have to pay for that, which is the most important part to me. I hope that my students here can find a sense of calm that will help them through the rest of the day. That is the short-term goal. The long-term goal would be learning how to learn something that is very hard. Stringed instruments are really hard to make sound good, do anything that you want on them. It takes a lot of dedication and practice but I also want them to find that that, is, that can be a good thing, that can be a happy thing. Them finding happiness and that self-expression is the most important thing to me. 
And for those students who can't carry a tune or choose not to, well, Roanoke City Public Schools has a class for them too. Hi, my name is Robert Rigby. I am the music production teacher here at William Fleming High School. So a great music program normally only has 20% of the student body that is in a fine arts class. So that's band, orchestra, choir, fine arts in general. That's about a good program. But there's another 80% that really don't get a chance to ever experience these classes. So one of my mentors was really involved with making sure that a class like this exists and we want to lower that age to a more or lower that percentage down so that we can have more kids involved with music so the branch in between band orchestra and choir can be involved with technology and that's where this class exists is that we have technology we have music we have things that they like to listen to and with this balance you know slowly over time we can continue to lower that gap and hopefully this will encourage our kids to involve themselves with music. But with this program it brought more of that 21st century um, style of playing so the kids have the opportunity to be using Mac computers, they're using MIDI production softwares like GarageBand, Label, uh, Ableton, they're using Logic Pro, FL Studios, basically anything that you can think about that's involving music production techniques we are now learning here in the school. So with this class I've been able to maintain a lot of students um, hope in what they do with even in just in school you know they come to my class thinking this is the only thing that they enjoy and it's you know coming from a school that has a lot of diversity we have students that really need a way to express themselves and my class has been really the answer and I can't tell you how many times I've had kids come in that are really just loving to be here because of this class and I think that's an opportunity that a lot of schools need to have because this program is just more than just music class it's like a second home to them. One of the marketing challenges expressed at the start of this show was the wish that more families knew about all of the incredible arts programs offered each day for free in Roanoke City Public Schools. To that end, we decided to create some buzz of our own. We took a recording from one of Mr. Rigby's music students and used it as the soundtrack for a highlights video that can be shared on social media, showing all the ways that students can stay connected through the arts in Roanoke City Public Schools. Oh 
Funding for this program comes from the Roanoke Cultural Endowment, roanokeculturalendowment.org, the City of Roanoke through the American Rescue Plan Act, Freedom First, where people bank for good, freedomfirst.com, with additional support from the American Advertising Federation of Roanoke.